Harvard professor says, all hell broke loose, it's a quote, when his study found no racial bias in police shootings. And maybe some of you have heard this, but I want to juxtapose, and Bill, I know you'll help me with this, juxtapose these two articles, how these different professors were certainly, at least initially, treated. So a Harvard professor said that all hell broke loose when he was forced to go out in public with armed security after he published a study that found no evidence of racial bias in police shootings. Boy, that's a red flag right there. And now, by the way, this professor is a black man. So just like the previous professor was. Why does that matter? Because it seems like everybody makes everything about race. So let's go ahead and put it on the table here. This is a person who at least from a racial point of view, didn't have anything self-serving on the plate here in this research. During a sit-down conversation with Barry Weiss of the Free Press, Harvard economics professor Roland Fryer discussed the fallout from a 2016 study he published on racial bias in Houston policing. The study found that police were more than twice as likely. Now, I want everybody to listen to this passage intently. And there's a reason why. The study found that police were more than twice as likely to manhandle, beat, or use some other kind of non-fatal force against blacks and Hispanics than against people of other races. However, the data also determined that officers were 23.8% less likely to shoot at blacks and 8.5% less likely to shoot at Hispanics than they were to shoot at whites. Why is that paragraph so important? What it shows, from my point of view, is the objectivity of this research. His conclusions, by the way, which I might even contest with own data that I look up, the point is that it's balanced. On one hand, he says, there does seem to be cert a certain amount of bias against Blacks and Hispanics. On the other hand, the bias shows it's actually in favor of Blacks and Hispanics when it comes to shootings. It shows to me this objectivity in his research. He was following what the numbers showed. If you were biased, you were falsifying data like the previous professor was from Ford State, it seems like it would all go one direction or the other, but it wasn't. Bill, what's your take on that? You're exactly right. Uh, and here's the thing that you didn't say, though, Mark, that, that I think is also important. It gives it credibility. So when people in law enforcement look at it, you guess what they're going to say? We need to look at this use of force issues. Why is there more use of force, non-lethal or non-shooting force in Hispanics and Blacks? And actually, they will give the report credibility and they'll try to address it and they'll try to fix the problem. Well, one thing to talk a little more about him, Mark, um, the things you didn't mention about him. His father was in prison. His mother was murdered. He had a, a rough upbringing. Let's, I mean, I guess that's a hard upbringing. I don't know rough, a hard upbringing. But the thing that drove him and that made, that, that why I am so impressed with him is, you know what he cares about, Mark? Only one thing, the truth. truth. And he's willing to put that truth out there regardless of the personal consequences. Why? Because it's the truth. And he believes that only that truth can actually help people in the community. If we lie about results, make up data, construct a false narrative, we're not doing any type of service to people who are living in that community. When you get real data, real information, real truth out there, then you're actually doing something to help people. And I think that's why this gentleman should be applauded. It was actually his pursuit of the truth, I find very refreshing. Let me put it like that. Well, that makes two of us. And you're right, he should be applauded. But of course, he's being villainized instead. Matter of fact, quote him here, says, Friar said people quickly, quote unquote, lost their minds. And some of his colleagues refused to believe the results after months of asking him not to print the data. The funny thing is, if his research had only shown a higher rate of use of force, against blacks and Hispanic to the stop there, I would mm -hmm. gu guarantee these colleagues, oh, that's great, gotta get that out there and so forth and so on. It, some so of like his colleagues, said, some of his colleagues, Mark, actually told him to release that part of the data and hold back the other part. Right, 
In other words, these aren't researchers. These are propagandists. Mm -hmm. They're propagandists, those people that hate him for this. And they're, like you said, they're trying to have him release this data piecemeal. They're not interested, Bill, in the truth, which is, by the way, the namesake of your podcast, Truth Nation. I think it's a great name because this is what we should all be aspiring to. Mm -hmm. It's what's accurate. Well, not what we feel like and not what we want to believe, but is it or isn't it? That's all yeah. that really matters. Two plus two equals four or it doesn't. Yeah. Um, I want to continue here with this. Well, but... can I jump in, Mark? I want to say yeah. that two important things to note, though, is first off, he has said, I did not expect to get these results. He has said that. He said uh -huh. that when he started the study, he expected to find that there was a racial disparity in officer-involved shootings. Yeah. Part two, when he when the data showed that there was not, guess what he did? He brought in a whole new group of research assistants, I think eight new research assistants, yeah. and he redid all the data all over again to make sure that there was nothing that, let's say, slipped through the cracks or nothing that was misinterpreted. And guess what happened? He came to the same result. 